These are seven of the craziest conspiracy theories ever shared on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Starting with the conspiracy theory that Adolf Hitler didn't die in 1945 and that he escaped Germany and went to South America. This conspiracy theory was shared by Tim Kennedy, who starred on the show Hunting Hitler, where a team of investigators investigated whether or not Hitler actually died in 1945. Tim Kennedy starts off by saying that there were declassified FBI documents that documented the FBI spent millions of dollars actively searching for Hitler after World War II. Like millions of dollars. Like Hoover was like, no, 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 send more FBI agents to South America, um, to North Africa, go to the Canary Islands, go to Spain, trying to find out where this guy went. So, Tons of real FBI documents with real leads, with real informants, some hand uh, or some first eye accounts. The official story is that Adolf Hitler killed himself in his bunker on April 30th, 1945. Joe Rogan asks Tim Kennedy if there was any evidence of this actually happening. Tim Kennedy explains that the Russians apparently got Hitler's body and brought it back to Moscow, where they let one genetic test occur. Well, the results from the genetic test done on Hitler came back odd. Okay, here's Hitler's skull. And when they did the genetic test, Testing, it's that of a 35 year old woman. So they're like, oh, well, this isn't Hitler, but they've said for the past 80 years that this is Hitler. Tim Kennedy states that there is no 100% evidence that Hitler died in that bunker in April of 1945. Tim then says that the majority of people with power in the Nazi party escaped Germany and went to South America following World War II. There was about three different rat lines that guys were able to successfully get out of Europe into South America. These are, there's no question that we're talking thousands, if not tens of thousands of high-ranking Nazis made it there. Tens of thousands? Tens of thousands. And I'm not talking like little soldiers. I'm talking high-ranking Nazis, officers, guys like Joseph Mengele and Adolf Eichmann. I mean, these are the most disgusting, despicable humans to exist at the time. After World War II, many isolated German-only communities were popping up in Argentina, and some of those communities still exist to this day. You could go into Bariloche, Argentina, and you know I'd be like, "Buenos días, amigos," and they're like, "Guten Morgen." I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I, 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 I meant good morning. Yeah, sorry, it's 2017, right?" I thought we spoke Spanish here. So, and there's tons of communities. I mean, if you go to Colonia Dignidad, which is now called Via Bavaria, the, the Bavarian village, it is uh, only German. Whoa. In the center of Chile, in the mountains of Chile, like you, there's no Spanish being being spoken there. It is exclusively German. And these are the descendants of Nazis, powerful Nazis. Holy shit! And this is going on right now. Yeah. Joe Rogan asks how many communities in Argentina are German only, and Tim tells him that there are around 50 communities and a few hundred thousand people that are direct descendants of Nazis living in Argentina. And man, it's weird when you walk into somebody's parlor and it's like you're stepping back in time into Europe. Like I'm walking in, it's, it's 2017, and I'm walking in Buenos Aires, Argentina into somebody's parlor and all of the tile is European and all the style and all the art is very German. Then Joe Rogan asks if there is any evidence of Hitler actually going to Argentina after World War II. Yeah, absolutely, potentially. Whoa. Yep. I, eyewitness accounts, I saw him get off a boat. I saw him meet here. What do you think happened? I mean, you've been you've been studying this for how long now? Three years. Three years. Yeah. If you, if you had a guess, if you had like a million bucks, you got to put it on one side or another. Did he go there? Yeah. Whoa. Tim Kennedy is a firm believer in the theory that Adolf Hitler escaped Germany after World War II and lived in South America. Although that is a popular theory, it doesn't compare to probably the most popular conspiracy theory the moon landing was faked. Now, this isn't just a regular, we never went to the moon theory. This conspiracy theory is that Stanley Kubrick, the director of The Shining, may have had something to do with the faking of the moon landing. Joe Rogan points out that room 237 in The Shining is the number of miles from Earth to the moon, 237,000. Joe Rogan also points out that that number is constantly changing. But then, Joe starts to talk about the conspiracy theory that Stanley Kubrick 
Mike was the one who faked the moon landing. The the conspiracy theorists, when they get the, the most crazy, when they when they really want to dive into who did it, they think it was all Kubrick. The Kubrick literally filmed the fake moon landing, right, right. uploaded it to the uh, American TV satellites. If anyone then, could do it, it'd be him. He'd be the guy I imagine, would get to do it. Can you imagine if that was that was really what happened? I've all heard all these the, years. I remember hearing all the fucking conspiracy theorists about the um, Illuminati killing him because he made uh, a... Yeah. yeah. Well, they were worried he was going to open his fucking mouth. Well, tell, he made tell the about moon. the moon landing. He, oh, no. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> no, because he made keep fucking, him, keep his fucking uh, eyes mouth wide shut. shut. That too. That was his last one. They're like, enough. Mm -hmm. This guy's getting too close. Although Joe Rogan isn't a huge believer in this conspiracy theory, he also points out how it could be possible. Sort of like Eddie Bravo's conspiracy theory that space is fake and that everything that we were taught about space is wrong. Anybody that thinks the Earth is flat, they totally don't believe what we're taught about what's above us. So, so when the people sun? say space is fake, they what about mean, the sun? They mean all the stuff information we're getting. You're lying about that shit. Eddie Bravo clarifies his argument and says that of course space is real because we can look up and see it, and he knows that saying space is fake is ridiculous, but he is a firm believer that everything we were told about space is a lie. Now, of course, everybody else on the podcast started to question Eddie Bravo and asked him to give cliff notes on why he believes this space is fake. This prompts Eddie Bravo to talk about a conspiracy theory that is very possible. The goal has always been for uh, the most uh, powerful emperors uh, is a one world government. They always wanted a one world government. There's no way to have a fucking one world government. The only way to make a one world government work is to have the people embrace it. They have to want it because nobody wants it. So the trick is to make, to make people want it, to embrace it, there's only one way, is if there was some extraterrestrial threat from up above us. That would be the only way to have everyone embrace the one world government. Eddie Bravo's largest piece of evidence for this conspiracy theory is that Ronald Reagan talked about it at the UN. Of course, when Eddie Bravo brought this evidence up on the podcast, everybody sort of laughed and thought that Eddie Bravo was lying about Ronald Reagan saying this, but to Eddie's defense, Reagan talked about aliens multiple times throughout his time in office. Just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet outside in the universe. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. All of us in the world discovered that we were threatened by an outer a power from outer space from another planet. Wouldn't we all of a sudden find that we didn't have any differences between us at all? We were all human beings, citizens of the world, and wouldn't we come together to fight that particular threat? Eddie Bravo's conspiracy theories are usually pretty out there, but this one actually has some evidence to support it. Sort of like war reporter Ben Anderson's conspiracy theory that the White Helmets in Syria are actually a front for Al-Qaeda. The White Helmets, officially known as Syria Civil Defense, is a volunteer organization that operates in parts of opposition-controlled Syria and in Turkey. Well, Ben Anderson firmly believes that the White Helmets are a front for Al-Qaeda. So when there's a, when there's a bombing and a building collapses, they go in and, and drag people out and get them medical attention as, as quick as possible. And people think that they're somehow or another involved in it, that they're a front? Yeah, to, to, and, and the, the footage is faked in order to drum up sympathy for the rebel-held areas. I mean, that's, I've, I've heard, you know, serious people say that serious um, people yeah, yeah not 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 loons on facebook i've heard you know like um, journalists or yeah yeah next joe rogan and author tj english talk about how the cubans may have played a hand in the assassination of john f kennedy that a handful of those cubans may have been involved in the kennedy assassination along with the italians with the mob because they were working hand in hand with the cia yeah that was one of the leading conspiracies outside yeah. of the cia killing him 
and even the CIA killing him was a part of the Bay of Con the Bay of Pigs conspiracy, yeah, yeah. and also the the idea that he wanted to disband the CIA. There was a really interesting article recently that was dismissing almost every single conspiracy theory about the Kennedy assassination. They said except the CIA one. There's legitimate possibilities that the CIA well, well you can bet your ass that if the CIA was involved then Cubans were involved yeah. TJ English explains that the CIA would go to Cuban military exiles and tell them to do different operations or assassinations and if these Cuban exiles would do these operations the CIA would in return go and get Fidel Castro they were calling them hobos but yeah. they were all very well dressed right that were near where the grassy knoll the was the men on the grassy yeah. knoll yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh they, there's lots of rumors about that that E. Howard Hunt was one of those men. Yeah. There was even a reference uh, that Jose Miguel Battle was one of those men, but that couldn't have been the case because he was in the army at the time, uh, the U.S. Army. Um, no, so so it's like a it's like a subterranean narrative that runs through the latter part of the 20th century, the, the CIA and right wing elements in American politics using the Cuban Americans to do all kinds of dirty covert deeds. And we're talking about terrorist activity, uh, assassination of an ambassador from Chile right in Washington, D.C., blew up his car because he was sympathetic to Castro. A bomb planted on a Cuban uh, jetliner flying from Panama City to Atlanta. 73 people killed, innocent people, including the fencing team from Cuba, young people. A dirty war, a dirty war was waged by the anti-Castro underground uh, in combination, in partnership with the CIA. And this, we know about it now because a lot of it has been declassified and it's come out. We didn't know about it at the time it was taking place. A topic that a lot of people like to theorize about is time travel. Like on Joe Rogan Experience number 1821, Joe Rogan, Burt Kreischer, and Tony Hinchcliffe discuss different theories on time travel. Joe starts off by telling Terrence McKinnon theory on time travel. One day someone's going to invent a time machine and that when they invent a time machine all time ceases to become linear. So you think if you have a time machine, well, oh, I'll just go back to the time where they were making the pyramids and I'll watch them do it. That's not what it works like. What he was saying, you can't travel where there are no roads. So once a road gets built, then you can travel. So once a time machine gets invented, then anyone from the invention of the time machine forward to forever can come back to that moment and can go to any point in time from that moment to the end of time. So all time ceases to be linear. Joe Rogan explains that there will be no tomorrow or the next day and so on. Everything will happen everywhere all at once. People can travel back and forth through time and there will be no ownership of anything because people will be able to go back in time and take it from you. He says that as time travel becomes more sophisticated, you will be able to travel back and forth through time as you are talking to people and if you say something you didn't like in a conversation, you can just go back and rewind and start the conversation over again. Everything happens everywhere all at once. I so people this. can travel back and forth through time. You can never own anything because someone could just travel through time and take it away from you when you weren't looking. Like, like as time travel gets more and more sophisticated, you can go back and forth in time while you're talking to people. You know, if you don't like what you said, you could rewind and start all over again. If you're in an argument with your wife, you can go to the library and get information and come back and go, actually, you know, Herodotus once said, and then bam, your, your wife thinks you're the smartest guy in the world. Like this, but it would, it would, would, there would be no normal life anymore. It would like, w the world itself would be completely unrecognizable because time would mean nothing you'd be able to travel back and forth through time. Burt Kreischer then asks, probably the most asked question in the world, if you could travel back into time, what would you see? Instead of answering the question, Joe Rogan says that that is a very theatrical time travel, but the real time travel wouldn't allow you to travel to a time before the time machine was created. Here we are, it's May of 2022. If time travel is invented in June, we're, we're not going back to April. You can't go back yeah, to April, okay. but you can go to from June to a million years in the future and see what people look like. You'll be able to do that. But they'll be able to come back too and everything's gonna be happening everywhere all at once. There's not gonna be any sort of structure to life. 
There's not going to be anything as, in terms of money, possessions. As long as you could freely time travel, there will be no time. Joe Rogan also points out that simultaneously you will become immortal because you can time travel to the future and the technology will be so advanced that the future will probably have something to make sure that you don't die. But then that raises the question, what will be the future if time travel exists? Because how can things get invented if people can just travel to the future where somebody already invented something? Will there even be new inventions after time travel? Another popular conspiracy theory is about 9-11 and how some people believe that the US government actually played a part in the attacks. That they not only knew that those planes are going to hit the towers, but that they planned for it. And they planned and they the allowed it to happen. That's the scariest of all the conspiracy theories. And I'm not saying that that's what happened. I think much more likely there's a lot of things that happened that were incompetence. I think getting that many people to keep their mouth shut about a plan where planes are going to slam into the World Trade Center, boy, that seems that seems sketchy. That seems like people would come out. But I think one thing they absolutely do do is when shit goes down, they take advantage of it. In this episode, they point out that in 2001, there was no social media and it was all just news. The news stations had so much power over the population and you couldn't really question anything without people thinking that you were crazy. Nowadays, it's not uncommon to question things due to social media and people purposely taking things out of context to fit their narrative. The thing about Tower 1 and Tower 2 specifically is they didn't fall like a controlled demolition at all. They fell like a building Building that was collapsing but tower seven felt fell like a building into its base that one's extraordinary that one's extraordinary and that one absolutely looks like a controlled demolition i am not saying it's a controlled demolition no. what i am saying is the way it collapsed it, it went into its base just like a controlled demolition and if you don't agree with that then the, you're talking nonsense if you don't agree with the fact that that looks like a controlled demolition, then we really can't talk because you're you're dealing in fantasy world. Or because you're it undeniably looks exactly like a controlled demolition. Now, Joe Rogan's not saying that it was a controlled demolition, but that is just what it looked like. Joe Rogan explains how there was a structural collapse and the top of Tower 7 caves in before the rest of the building collapses. That's it. There, there. So that's that thing. In the, see that? Boom. Okay, there it goes. So that collapses. So there's obviously the internal structure's gone. Mm. So this thing collapsing like that mm. doesn't, it doesn't throw me off as much mm. having seen that because I don't know jack shit about construction who does but I, I do know that construction companies are shady as fuck upon occasion anyways these have been seven of the craziest conspiracy theories ever shared on the Joe Rogan experience podcast if you guys enjoyed please be sure to leave a like and subscribe post notifications on and without further ado I'll see you guys in the next video peace out